Hi, welcome to Gabe's Cave. I'm Gabe. I'm Darren. I have dementia. Who are you, dinosaur? He's he's silent. But I'm Jeremy Clark, again, here for round two of uh, your guys' lovely show, Gabe's Cave. I'm even sporting one of the cool shirts this time around, so hopefully you don't immediately click off of this video now that you've seen it's me again. Yes, we are back again this week with Jeremy Clark. Completely different subject this time. Actually, we're going to be talking about uh, getting into the art industry and what it takes. Make sure you check them out. Look them up on Facebook, Instagram. Go to the website, rpghiring.com. Great people. Uh, and now let's get into it. What would you like to get into? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I suppose asking you about what it's like or how to get into the, the industry, the art industry, comic books and stuff like that. How much time do you got? Wait, how long is this segment? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it, there's a lot of different ways to actually break into the industry. One of them, however, does not involve wearing a dinosaur mask the entire time. So I think that this is the moment where we get the big reveal of who's underneath there. What do we got? What no, do we got? There he is. It's All right. Oh, we got a full cast now. We got a full cast. Okay. Um, but, you know, all jokes aside, uh, the more traditional route that a number of illustrators take or aspiring artists take is to do a portfolio submission. Okay. Um, you know, last time I was on the show, I had a portfolio here that I was showing you guys a bunch mm -hmm. of original art in. Well, um, most uh, publishers have on their websites a submission, right. you know, link where you can go ahead and submit uh, some of your work, some of your content, and get feedback from it or even potentially a job. And th that's usually how people so go about doing it. Like you said, the publisher is what you said, right? Mm -hmm. So publishers will have a submission, uh, a link there, and you, you have just a full portfolio of stuff, and you can submit, you know, like, I'm guessing, you know, say it's Marvel or whatever it is. You're going to do something that related and send it to them. Just so, yeah, you you're not going to want to submit an right. entire portfolio full of images, right? Usually you want to keep it to around five total images that you're going to uh, submit. Um, from those images, you want to be able to show some sequential pages. So don't just put nothing but pinups uh, in there or c cover type of layouts because that's not what, what the submission guys want to see, guys or gals. Um, a lot of the times they want to make sure that you're going to be able to tell a story visually. Right. And so if you're not able to translate a, a writer's script into a visual medium that you know conveys the emotion and the feel and the energy of uh, that, that script, then it doesn't matter how good you are at drawing a static image. Uh, they're just right. not going to be interested because at the end of the day, it's all about telling a story. You know, that's why you guys pick up comics in the first place, right? To read what's going on in there. You're not, you, while the pictures obviously complement it, at the end of the day, it's all about a cohesive storytelling element. So would, would following different editors from different companies be a good idea on social media? Maybe not stalking them, but but but, 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 but just yeah, don't them. don't go just sending them a bunch of things to their mailbox. Cause, and, cause uh, I know I know that sometimes they go to different they might go to different comic cons and hold a portfolio review. Now that's a that's a very good point. Um, I know at the Fan Expo events that they've had in the <coughs> past, uh, both DC and Marvel editors uh, go there where uh, you submit a you know a, a portfolio submission uh, in advance, and then what they'll do is they'll pin up on the board each day five or ten names, and those are the only people that got chosen for that day to actually get a sit down face to face, mm -hmm. like kind of what we're doing right now, and have that editor from that publisher actually look over what she submitted and provide a review of it, maybe some constructive criticism or notes, or say, hey, you're already, you know, kicking right. butt and taking names so much, you know, why don't we send you one of our scripts and see what, what we can do. 
Um, but 90% of the time, you know, you're not going to have that available face-to-face -face with, with a guy. You right. know, you can't just like waltz up to the, to the ball pen anymore and right. be like, ah, here you go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, uh, it doesn't quite work that right. way anymore. Um, and so uh, a lot of the times you want to submit an online, mm -hmm. you know, portfolio review or submission to the publisher. And like I said, you want to keep it concise to about five images three to four of which are sequential pages, maybe one or two that are like cover quality type of uh, illustrations. And a lot of the times the scripts, um, you can find old, you know, comic book mm -hmm. scripts online. You know, you just, you pull a script that already exists out there, choose a segment of pages from that script, and go ahead and include the script that you were working off of with your submission. And in many ways, uh, not only does that help you to try to determine how you're going to go about approaching a page, but you can go back and look at that book later and literally see how the pro mm -hmm. ended up doing it and how it relates and compares to your own uh, work. And so the materials are out there. You know, they we're in such a unique time in the sense that there's so much information now that's readily available yeah. that you just couldn't get, you know, years ago. Um, the internet's wonderful, you know, for all of you guys that are currently on the internet watching this show, um, you know, use that. Use that to your advantage. You kind of touched over it a little bit there, but what's the best way to market yourself um, when it comes to trying to get your content out there to be seen? Well, I mean, obviously social media mm -hmm. uh, plays a large role now. I know uh, in the last segment that I was on, I mentioned that Rob Liefeld had seen my, you know, homage that I worked on with Ray and retweeted it and, you know, gave it the old like a and, mm -hmm. you know, moved it forward. And so, believe it or not, we're all on social media. Everybody's, right, got, a, everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody's sitting there scrolling through at some point on the day. If you're on, you know, sitting on, at home or, you know, just trying to kill time, uh, everybody has it. Everybody's on it and you'd be quite surprised at who might potentially see something of yours. Um, so taking advantage of those platforms, I think really helps to elevate the number of eyes at least that will see your work and potentially uh, help get it to whoever it needs to be that might provide you like mm -hmm. professional published work later. And like you said, going to the website and submitting as well that way or, or even maybe even direct messaging um, some of the people I know, was it Rob Broussard said he, uh, he told me he messaged, I don't remember who it was, to get in with the Marvel cards. He said he messaged them like once a week with a different submission like 20 times. And finally they were like, okay, we'll give you, we'll give you a shot. Well, the, well the, the cards are slightly different because they're ran by, like I think the Marvel ones at least are ran by Upper Deck. They are. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't done any of the cards. But uh, so it... it it does have a, a slightly different platform by which you get into those as opposed to the, to the physical comics mm -hmm. because they're two completely separate uh, entities and studios. While it's obviously a Marvel uh, right, branded right. product through Upper Deck, it's, it's slightly different. Um, but with that said, and if you, you, know, you flip open a book and on the inside, it's going to tell you who the editor was. You know, it, it, who the president, who the publisher, who everything is, flip open your, you know, whichever your favorite book is, whatever your favorite series is, see who is editing those series. Try to gauge, you know, the type of content that they like, because mm -hmm. obviously they're the ones pumping it through to get published. And then kind of model or emulate in some ways uh, some of what you're seeing into your own work. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, then target those audiences by, by, you know, approaching the people that you are already reading, you're already enjoying um, as an illustrator. So, so. You, you talked about submitting and, and all this, and you obviously want to get noticed by the, the editors or the publishers. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what is kind of the most, is it the most important thing to, to, to draw their attention? Is it, is it unique layouts? Is it the character design? Is it the background? I mean, what, is there a mixture of just everything? I mean, what, what is the main focus to get their attention? I mean, obviously you want to try to excel in as many categories as you possibly can, right? I mean, the, the person that is able to do multiple things at a high uh, quality, high level is obviously going to, you know, it rise to the top, I think, above everybody else. But, um, you know, again, it falls back to being able to tell a story. It all starts with the, you know, writing of some kind. 
And so if you are unable to convey those words uh, into a visual medium, then odds are it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to convince somebody to let you draw their book. Now, granted, I'm not known as a penciler, so my job is slightly different. You know, for those of you out there that are wanting to be an inker or a colorist or a writer, you know, the submission processes are different for every single one. However, the same thing that is similar is always, you know, you want to keep it to five pages. All the, all the basic things uh, don't change. It's just what it is that you're submitting that's changing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that going to shows is also very important. If you have the ability, the capacity to be able to go to an event, um, actually talk to other illustrators, talk to other individuals that are professionals in that industry, um, that will help provide you some insight as well. You know, while there's a ton of information out there online, there is something to be said about having a physical, you right. know, uh, encounter and interaction with somebody <coughs> who can tell you face to face, either, you know, this is great or you need to work on this or this or this. Um, and that just boils down to each individual. You know, I could sit here and talk about wanting, you know, a certain type of perspective or understanding your light source or, you know, all these different types of little things, but we'd be boring the audience to death. Right, right. Um, it, it, it's a person-by-person -person basis. So it's, it, everybody has different things that they are strong in and then that they're, they have some weaknesses on. And so that's where it comes into needing to go talk to somebody in person and actually having that, that immediate feedback there for you. Um, what, what mediums should you work with the most when it comes to, you know, submitting things and, and getting seen, you know, uh, be it penciling or inking or, you know, what? Well, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm a dinosaur uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> I still do everything traditional. I, I don't, I'm terrible with technology right. uh, outside of being able to do like my social media post uh, to give you guys more content, um, which I still have trouble with. It. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the way of the world is obviously technology is growing larger and larger and part of our society. And so that's also an art. Um, a lot of people are learning the tools um, of Photoshop or what have you and being able to pump out work even faster as a result of the tools that they're utilizing. You know, there's something to be said about having a back button, okay? I don't have undo. a back button. Hmm. I, don't ha I don't have a undo. I don't yeah. have a, you know, auto-correct the line right. or auto-create the curve or any of those things that, that the digital guys do. You know, if I pull the line wrong, I, that's it. You know, I pull uh -huh. the line wrong. There's no... There's no, uh, you know, just autocorrect there for me. Um, so uh, I do feel like, you know, if you take the time to learn the digital elements, it'll certainly make your life easier. It might even uh, make things go a little faster just because there are so many things that, that can be more easily adjusted and corrected from a digital right. platform as opposed to a traditional one. Now, the, the downside to that um, and maybe you already know where I'm going with it, but uh, the obvious thing is you guys are collectors, right? Absolutely. You guys, I mean, yes. Gabe, right? You, yes. got a, you got a lot of art up there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, there wouldn't be a Gabe's cave if there wasn't things lining these walls. Now, if I was doing everything digitally, you, the collector, doesn't have a tangible uh, thing to original. hang up on the wall. There is no originals. There is none of those sorts of things. So it does have its drawbacks and its limitations depending on what's important to you, right. the artist. Now, if you don't care about any of that stuff and you're just like, hey, I want my name on a book and I want as much of it out there as I possibly can and flood the gates uh, so that everybody knows who I am, right. that might not be important to you to have all those you know, originals to potentially you know, sell or uh, do whatever with, but uh, I'm an old, like I said, dinosaur kind of guy, so I still collect uh, to this day. I still have a lot of art by other illustrators, and I enjoy having the physical, you know, original, you know, knowing that I'm the one that has it, I'm the one that owns it, and I can look at it right, you know, anytime I want. Um, so, you know, there there's advantages, and there's some disadvantages. It just boils down to what you guys feel most comfortable with at the end of the day. Right. 
Um, what recommendations would you have to like aspiring artists? Well, I would say, you know, the, the biggest things that people are always looking at um, is anatomy, right? It's something that we're around every single day, right? You're always looking at another individual, another person. We're pretty well versed in human anatomy, right? You, you can kind of spot if something's a little crooked, it's not exactly right. Um, so understanding your anatomy, making sure that you have it all right, is step one. You know, if how are you going to do an action shot where like Spider-Man is you know, swinging right. into the scene and you gotta draw some foreshortening elements, which simply means that it may not be entirely anatomically correct mm -hmm. because you're trying to create this dynamic shot uh, through foreshortening, but it l looks right simply because you understand anatomy enough to be able to tweak that thing to where it'll seem right to the audience, but in reality, it might not be physically possible to do. Um, but you would, if, if you don't even know how that anatomy works, how are you going to create that, you know, dynamic pose or shot, right. you know, in the first place? And so, or draw feet. Uh, draw a lot of different things. I mean, uh, there's, there's just so much that goes into it, you know. Uh, obviously, you, you want things, <laughs> you want your eyes to be in line, you know, you don't want, you don't want a lazy eye, right, no, no. laying in there, uh, you don't want something to feel like it's drooping a little, right. it might, like, what, that seems a little off, I don't know why. Well, it's because <laughs> you are around people uh, every single day. You're going to notice if something doesn't quite seem like it belongs, if there's that one Where's Waldo thing, you're going to find it in that image. And it usually always boils down to anatomy. So if there's the one thing that you would harp on the most is just understanding the anatomy, getting it right, and then you can build everything else from there. It's, but you gotta start at least with that. Okay. Well, we have two really important questions. They'll be our last questions. Okay. Who's your favorite superhero? Ooh. Uh, I think the last time I was on here, um, I had uh, Captain America shirt on, and that is my favorite character uh, for sure. Um, just everything about the character in terms of justice and honor, and you know, wanting to instill and embody those types of principles. Uh, I, I was always fond of. Plus, I used to read a lot of the old ones where he's like punching Hitler in the face yeah. and stuff, uh, like early on. Yeah. And I grew up uh, in a military family, so naturally uh, that that was the direction that right. uh, I tend to, to lean to so and the yeah. last question and most important how do you get such great hair <laughs> well you, you see you run it through a couple times no uh, <laughs> it, it, you know this is actually quarantine hair you know I've been I've been locked down so long yeah. that I haven't had a chance to uh, to actually go get a haircut I don't know about the rest of you guys out there but I am in desperate need of one. This is this is a main going on over here. I look like something out of a 80s glam metal band. Okay. It's, it's gonna get it's gonna get pretty it's bad. It's coming back. Yeah. It, is. it really is. It's gonna be a Tiger King mullet before <laughs> things go south. <laughs> get it. That's if, if it gets any worse, we don't want that. So uh, you know, yeah, it, it, it this is actually not how it usually is. But I'm 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 glad that you that, that it's at least suitable here. So yeah. we appreciate here here. Well, um, I'm glad you made it out for the second time. Yeah, you know, and, I'm, I'm uh, happy to keep coming. Yeah. If you guys want to listen to me <laughs> keep, keep do rambling lots. on, then uh, you, you let them know in the comments and you say you, you want me back, I'll, I'll happily come back. Yeah, but. Lots of knowledge here. And uh, if there's any questions for you, uh, or questions for you, you guys want to ask about you know getting into the, the industry and anything else like that, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. Yep. And, and you can also uh, find me in, yeah. in my work and follow me at, uh, at Jeremy Clark Art. That's uh, my handle for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, pretty much everything. If you can remember my name and you can remember the word art, you're, you're halfway there. And we'll actually sh blow it up right here on the bottom of the screen. Yes, right there. Fancy, <laughs> fancy orange or something colors. I don't really know what we decided to do later on <laughs> and uh, yeah so we're gonna go to the last week's giveaway where you guys get to win something Brandon's gonna find us some 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 winners but last week we we showcased 
Rodney Roberts, and he had the really cool Ghost Rider and Maul. I've got them laying around here somewhere. Is that them? I think so. It is. Rodney Roberts, the art nerd. The nerd. Yeah, with two R's. Nerd. I'm sure that was some good. cool stuff in there. Yeah, I see a little cool snake stuff. eyes action. Snake eyes, yeah. yeah a, little, a little Rick and R Rick. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Swifty Rick. Swifty, get Swifty. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Was that not Snake Eyes? I mean, was that not Cobra Commander? Oh, I'm Cobra completely Commander. wrong. I'm sorry. That yeah. was not Ghost Rider, was it? No. 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 I lied. There wasn't even a single skull in there. I'm disappointed. No skulls. Be disappointed you know in me. Put put L's in the chat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Put an, F, put an F in the chat. <laughs> Drop an F in the chat. It's not a strength. Go ahead and pay those respects. Okay. Now, I know you guys wanted me to sign up a couple of these books. I brought a few back. Uh, it, it, is this for like a future giveaway or something? What, what do we got going we on here? Yeah, 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 let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that um, before we get to the... No, before, well, spotlight. I mean, you guys can keep talking while I'm signing these away. This yeah. is actually... Uh, I got to work on this cover with... Um, Eric Henson, uh, who I mentioned the last time I was on, uh, we also just wrapped up the issue 106 TMNT cover. Uh, but this is his uh, own creator, own series called Eden. If you're into space odysseys, like Alien, that sort of thing, uh, this is a pretty, pretty cool uh, book that I highly recommend. So hopefully whoever gets these from you guys will enjoy it. But I'm going to sign the, uh, the inside cover of them while they're wrapping everything else up here. And uh, hopefully, like I said, you guys like them. Cool. Oh, well, while he's laying down the uh, the signatures there, uh, Brandon, you want to find out some winners for Absolutely. Rodney yeah, Roberts? Yeah, there we go. Congratulations to this person, <laughs> way over there, this person up here, and dead last, that good old consolation prize there. And now I think we should uh, go to this week's Artist Spotlight. Which is Fred Thomas, all the way from the UK. And cross the pond. Gabe, you have yet crossed the pond, that's right. I, I, I actually I'm so this. disappointed I don't get to do you guys' uh, London film and Comic Con. Because uh, I had an absolute blast last time I was there. There you go. There you go, shift them over here. Let's see what we got here. I can't remember that. It's from Invader Z. Pretty sure. Invader Zim? Zim, that's, that's from, it. Looks like that's from Legend. Tim Curry. Snake Eyes. That's a cool one. Adventure Time, right? <laughs> that is Adventure Time. Yeah, there Jake you go. Look at that. Venom. Venom? Yeah. Wonder Woman? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's Lizard Man. It's me. Ooh, it the, is I. The Lizard Man. <laughs> Terminator, that one's pretty cool. Is that like a foil? Yes, yeah. that is actual foil. Yeah, that one's pretty cool, actually. How do, how do they... He, he literally color. wrapped it in foil. How do they paint and or color on the foil? How does that work? I have to ask him. Yeah. Or yeah. tell us in the comments. Is that Caesar? Yes, I believe that is Caesar from Planet of the Apes. I don't know that one. Looks like a Transformer. And then... 
I don't know that one either. Those guys for you. Some skull thing. It looks like some kind of key. Yeah. Brandon, what you got? Which one do you like there? Kind of like Goonies. I, I like uh, Legend, the uh, Tim Curry character from Legend. Yeah. I like Snake Eyes and the Lizard. <clears throat> I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Terminator. That's pretty clever. Um, but I, I like the Adventure Time one too because it was the uh, one I could instantly. Did you spot. watch that show? I don't, and yet I somehow know <laughs> the uh, the characters. Jake and Finn, yeah. yeah. Uh, I never really watched it either. But I think I, I think are. Boom does the books for them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I believe it's Boom. I like the Snake Eyes myself. Uh, I definitely did. I was always GI Joe growing up, and always been my favorite. Nothing wrong with that. You know, one of my favorite G.I. Joe covers was a Michael Turner cover of the Renegar edition. Okay. Yeah, it had Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow on the cover, all decked out. So if you're a big Michael Turner fans out there, just giving them a shout out. Well, make sure you guys leave a comment down below stating which one you want, and we will try to choose you. And if you won <laughs> last week, Rodney Roberts... Make sure you send us an email with your, your information so we can get it out to you. And I believe that is it, unless you guys have any more questions for him. No? Well, no. thank you for having me, and, and thank you guys thank for you. tuning in, you know. Uh, hopefully you haven't gotten too sick uh, of seeing me on here. Uh, otherwise, you know, stay safe out there. Um, you know, keep moving forward, have some positive energy, uh, be a friend to your neighbor. So Absolutely. Make sure you check his... His social's out. Send him a message. And we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Take care. Bye.